everyone, Ryozo Tsujimoto here again. We're here today to talk about Iceborne's third free title update. Some players may know a bit about what we'll touch on, but we'd like to get the word out to everyone. As always, I'm joined by these two gentlemen. First up... Hello everyone, I'm Kaname Fujioka, Executive Director and Art Director. Good to be here. And next... I'm Daisuke Ichihara, Director of Iceborne. All right, so let's get started with another rollout of information for everyone. You guys ready? Yep. Sure. To start things off, let's take a look at our latest trailer. Check it out! The third free title update features Furious Rajong and Raging Bracadios. We'd like to take the time now to talk about these monsters and highlight what makes them so great. Let's start things off with Furious Rajong, shall we? Sure. When a normal Rajong gets angry, its fur turns gold. But with Furious Rajong, its fur is always in that golden state. Then, when it gets truly furious, that fur will sparkle gold. And its attacks will become much more vicious. Yep, and we've added a number of new mid-range and long-range attacks to its arsenal, which adds a lot of variety to the fight. You're gonna have a lot of fun with this monster. The thing about this Rajong variant is that it has no tail. With a normal Rajang, when it enters rampage mode, its forelimbs become hard as rock. So you'd normally focus on its tail, but you can't do that with this one. With Furious Rajang, you need to aim for the head. I heard that it has a vicious pinning attack as well, right? I'm guessing teammates will need to get the life powders out. Yes, make sure to help your teammates out if one of them gets pinned. As for its equipment, I'm sure people really want to see it, so let's give everyone a peek. Furious Rajang will come complete with a unique set of armor. The armor forged from a regular Rajang was based on kimono, which I think people can see. But this time we went with a massive, powerful design to match the power of this Rajang. On the other hand, the Palico armor is pretty cute and very monkey-like. So's the weapon. <laughs> yep. Never forget your Palico. Furious Rajang's armor set comes with a brand new set bonus skill and I think a lot of players are going to enjoy playing around with it. Next up, we have one more monster variant to talk about today, and that's Raging Bracadios. So this is a variant of the regular Bracadios, and what makes this different is that it's much larger and moves at a slower pace. But the slime that seeps from its body is unique in that it's extremely volatile. So, if you attack it, the slime may explode immediately, or slime on the ground may keep exploding. This monster is capable of triggering explosions across a wide area. So, hunters will have to exercise extreme caution against this powerful opponent. In previous games, if you attack the active body parts of Raging Bracadios, the slime would detonate. But we slightly changed its design. Now, if you attack those active parts, they'll become inactive, and the slime will drop to the ground. Once it drops, the slime will detonate. So there are parts of the fight that'll force you to change your approach. Also, Raging Bracadios will head to a specific area once certain conditions are met. Once it enters this area, it'll set the entire place ablaze. We showed a bit of this in the trailer, and I bet it caught a lot of people off guard. During this phase of the fight, you can't use Farcasters. And you also can't use traps, nor can you escape the area. It really becomes a super tense showdown between the hunter and the monster. 
kind of like a fight to the death. Guess we'll see who comes out on top. That's really cool. If you faint, you'll be sent back to camp, right? Yeah. It's a one-way street, though. You can get in, but you can't get out until you faint. Sounds rough. We're hoping people appreciate the tension of the hunt. Could we see what its armor looks like? Sure. The armor design highlights the active nature of the monster's slime. Compared to the regular Bracadillos armor, it has a bit of a different finish to it, so I hope our players will enjoy it. What kind of skills does it have? It features the same agitator skill found in the regular Bracadillos armor. This skill activates whenever a monster becomes angry. But this new armor also comes with weakness exploit and other useful skills. There are a lot of skills that I feel Gunlance players are going to be very happy about. So if you're one of those players, make sure to check out this armor set. Now that we have the monsters and gear out of the way, we'd like to touch on updates to the game system. Let's start with the weapons. We added one brand new feature to weapon augmentations. Similar to layered armor, this feature will allow you to create layered weapons. Now you can change the appearance of your weapon without modifying its stats. You can customize your weapon's appearance, but this is only possible for weapons that have the same kind of makeup. We decided to roll this feature out in two parts. The update in March will let you customize only certain weapons. These are the weapons that have a clear base and attachment to them, so you can swap out both however you want. Later in April, you'll also be able to change the appearance of unique weapon designs. This is another new layer to augmentation, but it only works on weapons that can be augmented. Sounds very cool! We also made improvements to the Hunter Helper feature. Last update, we snuck in golden and silver eggs as part of the rewards for helping other hunters so you can earn more money. But this time, we're going to let you receive those rewards if you help master rank hunters who have a lower MR than yourself. This will net you a bit more rewards than usual. The rewards for assignments and other quests will have their reward drops adjusted. So helping out with assignments may net you some carved face stones, while other regular quests can net you King Armor Spheres. This adds an aspect to the game where you're helping with quests depending on what your needs are. If you're in the mood to do some master rank quests, go and help out lower ranked hunters, and you'll be well rewarded for your efforts. It's a very nice addition. Yep. For the Guiding Lands, we actually added a brand new item. It's called a Banishing Ball, and it's an item that you can only use in the Guiding Lands. This is a unique item that when thrown at a monster, they'll disappear from the Guiding Lands. Or should I say, it'll forcibly make them leave the Guiding Lands. That's neat. Yes, so if a monster shows up and you want them gone ASAP, throw this item and they'll head on their merry way. Obviously, this item has a huge effect on gameplay, so only the quest leader can use this. There are some other changes being made, so here's a quick summary. Rarity 12 armor can now be upgraded all the way to level 20. In addition, charms that maxed out at level 4 can now be upgraded to level 5. We have a lot of these little changes included in this update. Details about this update can also be found on MonsterHunter.com, so make sure to have a look. Now we'd like to give updates about your room. The room this time is very splendid, right? Is this your summer home? That's exactly it. I asked them to film in my summer home. It's wonderful. Thank you. This is part of the pure decadence room theme. Yes, it's a beautiful theme that's similar to a classic palace. It's got a whole lot of marble. This here is some decor that we're offering as paid add-on content. We're also adding a group of new monster figures along with this update. In this update, we're adding monsters like Zen Ogre, Namiel, and Safijiva. That's right. These are some popular monsters that were recently added to the game. We also added music, too. That's correct. It'll also be on sale as paid add-on content for those interested. This time we added some jazz remixes and other interesting tracks for your listening pleasure.
Also available for sale will be a batch of new pendants. A lot of cute ones too, from the looks of it. The Paoluma one is very cute. And we added a lot of cool new stuff with this batch of content. Oh, and I almost forgot, we also have new sticker sets available for purchase. We also have a bunch of new hairstyles too. The hairstyles are based on the NPCs from Monster Hunter World and are available for free. Try giving your character a makeover with them. The next Astera Celiana seasonal event will run in April, so we'd like to take some time to talk about that. The seasonal events are great because the gathering hubs really come alive. That's right, they always get a nice makeover. I think it's about time we head on over to check it out. Um, I noticed you've changed a bit, Ryozo. Did you think we wouldn't notice anything? <laughs> What's up with that, anyway? I'll explain later, okay? Let's just head over to the gathering hub first. Let's go! All right, we're in Celiana's Gathering Hub, and the theme for this seasonal event is... Surprise! It's based on roses, your favorite flower. This event? Yes, it's an homage to you, you could say. Well, thank you for dedicating this to me. So much has changed in the hub. Yeah, you like it? If I could be frank. The platters are all different, too. Yep. We were aiming for something sophisticated. So we cut down on the portions. <laughs> Even the snowman got a visual makeover. It's a very cute snowman now. The face of the snowman and the one single rose popping up is a nice touch too, I think. As with previous events, this seasonal event comes with quests that will let you craft special armor. And of course, this armor was designed with the event's theme in mind. That's right. It's a set of armor that we set out to make as elegant as we could. The Palico armor was designed to be like a gothic doll. The face was specially made to match the costume. <laughs> Poogie also got dressed up. Poogie too? A very rosy Poogie. The seasonal event will welcome some brand new event quests, which will give you rewards to create very unique equipment. Continuing the legacy of the frozen spear tuna are a pair of wet fish dual blades, as well as something based on the rare endemic downy crakes. We fashioned some headgear out of them, so you'll look super cute when you're out on a quest. Looks like fun! Since the release of Iceborne, we've added numerous guild card backgrounds and squad card additions. In this update, we added even more variations to give your cards a more personal feel. That's all the information we have about the third free title update, but we wanted to provide you with some new information. Although it won't contain any special assignments, we have another title update coming out in April. We plan on adding a new monster via event quest. Kulv Teroth is coming to Master Rank. This time it will be an event quest where up to four players team up to slay the monster. Simply put, it's a Master Rank Kulv Teroth in a traditional quest. If you've played through the High Rank Siege and obtained Kulv Teroth weapons, and still have them hanging around, you can use the Master Rank materials from Kulv Teroth to upgrade those weapons. It's not in the weapon tree, right? Yes, that's correct. It's an upgrade system where you raise the weapon's level to add abilities to the weapons you already have. This way, you can upgrade your weapons without pointless busy work and raise them to a level where you feel powerful using them. Here's a brief summary of the updates we're making to the Kulv Teroth fight, including updates to her high rank version. Arc-tempered monsters are also making their way to Iceborne. 
The first arc tempered monster is none other than Nami L. This is going to be a very difficult fight, but we know that there will be hunters that are up to the task. Finally, we have another teaser for you. So, what did you think? This monster is part of our fourth free title update. For those who've never encountered it, this is Alatreon. This monster is capable of changing forms and uses multiple elements. In previous games, it was an incredibly aggressive monster. This time, expect it to be even more fierce. Yep, we think everyone's gonna love it. We'll have more information for everyone in a future developer diary, so be on the lookout. That's it for today's Developer Diary. We'd like to say goodbye with our usual parting words. Happy hunting!